Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm going to be posting a video soon about making my new uh, 6S and 8S lithium ion packs. But since I get so many questions about lithium ion cell use, um, whenever I post a, a video about them, I wanted to put this one out first and try to get ahead of some of those questions. So one of the questions I get most often when I put out a video about lithium ion cells has been someone contacting me and asking why their experience has not gone as well as what's seen in my videos. Most often the case is that the person has either chosen the wrong kind of lithium ion cell to use or that they are using it for an application in which it's not suitable. So I'm going to try to cover how to figure out uh, whether or not what you want to do with them falls in that category or either of those categories. So you can see here I've done lots of flying with lithium ion packs over several years now and I've gone through using several different types of cells over that time. Uh, most often I've chosen to use moly cell brand lithium ion cells. Uh, the reason being that they have a line of high output cells that all are rated for 35 amp output. Not many lithium ion cells are rated for that high a current draw. A few are though. The Samsung 40T I think can put out quite a few amps. I made uh, some packs out of these oh, a, a few years ago now. So almost all the packs I've made have been with cells that can output 30 or more amps. Uh, constant, or at least that that's what they're rated for. I have made one set of packs out of these Bach 5000 milliamp hour 21700 cells, and they're only rated for 15 amp output. Uh, this I've only gotten for just a few of them just to do some testing, because I wouldn't I wouldn't go and spend a bunch of money on uh, on any lithium ion cell that's crammed pack with milliamp hours. The lower the number of milliamp hours, the better the cell's ability to put out amperage will be. So it's about finding a good balance of a cell that can put out enough amps that it can handle the setup you want to use, but it still has a decent number of milliamp hours to get you some distance. For comparison here, this 5000 milliamp hour box cell is actually quite comparable to the Moly Cell brand. Moly Cell makes a 5000 milliamp hour as well. Uh, this is their 4200 milliamp hour though, and it's rated for 35 amps constant. This one, with only 800 more milliamp hours, the, mil the amp constant rating drops to 15, so less than half the amps that it can handle, just because it has 800 more milliamp hours. So getting the biggest capacity is not always the best. You need a very low amp draw setup to be able to use these cells. That's why I've used them to make an 8S pack, because my amp draw on 8S is quite low with my Scout Quad. But for my regular 7-inch quad, I use the 35 amp rated cells. And I actually use them... Uh, I use two 6S packs in parallel. When using two packs in parallel, the current draw is shared between the two packs. Going by that theory, these two 6S packs together in parallel are rated for 70 amps constant. But my 7-inch quad, flying 60 kilometers an hour, only pulls about 12 to 15 amps. And I fly it at that speed for 90% of its flights. Uh, the other 10% of the time, I will get up to 25, 35, even 40 amps that I'm pulling, but that's still shared between these two packs. So I'm at the most, I'm using them for their rated amp draw. But most of the time, I'm flying them at one quarter of the rated amp draw capacity. By not overtaxing the cell and drawing too much current from it, you're prolonging its life and increasing its reliability. And you also get more milliamp hours out of a cell, uh, the lower the number of amps that you run it at. Let's maybe take a look at some of the uh, data sheets here, and you can get an idea for what I'm referring to about amp draw versus milliamp hour output. So as you can see on the chart, the number of milliamp hours that the cell is going to put out is going to drop 
as the current that it's used at increases. And now this, the amount that it will drop by the ratio is going to be different for every cell. But the higher the capacity of the cell, the more likely it is to drop more sharply. And other features such as, say, the internal resistance, which is kind of an indicator of a battery's ability to put out an amperage, the internal resistance will be different for all different cells, even two cells made by the same manufacturer if they're two different ones, like the P26A and the P28A. They're going to have different internal resistances and they're going to put out different amount of amp milliamp hours uh, based on the amount of current you're drawing from them. So between manufacturers, it's going to vary even more. So when you go to look at cells and data sheets to try to decide what cells are going to work for you, you really need to take a good look at the data sheets and compare the numbers between the different brands. And that's going to take a bit of effort because the data sheets are not all prepared in a standard fashion. So the way one company displays the data is going to be different from the way another one displays the data. If you can't find a data sheet for a cell, I would suggest not buying it unless you see lots of great reviews telling you that it performs really well. So there are a few steps I would suggest going through before making a decision about buying your own lithium ion cells or even store-bought packs. Because even if you're buying a store-bought pack, I, in my opinion, you should still try to find out what cells they're using and figure out if it's actually worth the money, depending on what cells they've got inside. Now, of course, I'm sure that uh, some of the more expensive ones are probably going to be a little more expensive because they're using more expensive, better quality cells, but maybe not necessarily. I'd always like to know what, what cell they've got inside. So my suggestion is before buying any of your own lithium ion cells to use for flight packs, the first step would be making sure that your current meter is calibrated correctly. You want to make sure that the, the amp draw readings that you're going to be getting to base your battery decisions on are as close to correct as possible. I've got a video about calibrating your current sensor, and I'll put a link to that down in the description. Now that you've got your current sensor properly calibrated, try doing a few different uh, maneuvers with your, with your build and see how many amps it's drawing. Do this in the meantime with a LiPo, for instance and uh, see how many amps you're going to pull at 60 kilometers an hour forward flight. This will be your constant amp draw that you're going to be using your lithium ion pack at. For my 7-inch build, it's between 12 and 15 amps for 60 kilometer an hour forward flight. For ascending a mountain or going up, going up an incline or perhaps catching yourself from a, a bit of a dive, for my build, the amps go up to about 35, even 40. But usually, if I'm just ascending a mountain, it's going to be more around 25 or 30. Now, the cells that I've decided on are rated for 35 amps. But I use my packs, two in parallel. So the amp draw is shared between the two packs. So when I'm saying my peaks are, you know, 30, 35, 40 amps, that amount of current draw is still being shared between these two packs. So each pack is still only seeing 15 to 20 amps of current draw from it, which is well below the 35 amps maximum uh, constant that they're rated for. Now, during regular forward flight, I'm only pulling 12 to 15 amps. So I'm running these at a less than a quarter of what they're rated for. Running them so much lower than their actual rated amp handling capacity is how you get your packs to last longer and be more reliable. If you run them at, if you run your packs at a high number of amps, they're not going to last you very long and they're not going to put out as many milliamp hours as they could if you were to run them at lower amps. So again, getting the highest capacity cell is not always the best choice. Getting the one that can handle the number of amps that you need from it is going to be the best one to get. The capacity of the cell should only be the second part of the choice after you've already shortlisted ones that are going to be able to manage the number of amps that you need to pull from them. I recommend that you use a lithium ion cell rated for double your drone's average current draw or equal to its peaks. 
based on whichever number is highest. I recommend this as a minimum requirement. For example, Drone XX pulls 10 amps constant at 60 kilometers per hour and hits peaks of 25 amps. I would recommend that the cells be rated for either double the constant amp draw or equal to the peaks. In this case, 25 amps because it's the highest of the two numbers. Knowing the cells require a minimum rating of 25 amps constant, I would base my cell choices on that. It may be possible to find a quality lithium ion cell rated for 20 to 25 amps with a capacity of 3000 milliamp hours. But is it worth it when you can get a moly cell P28A lithium ion cells rated at 35 amps with only 200 milliamp hour less capacity? Another part I wanted to cover here was why I choose uh, to use these instead of lipos. Here's the uh, number one reason. This 4,000 milliamp hour lipo weighs 617 grams. This 4,200 milliamp hour lithium ion pack weighs 453 grams. So there's a significant difference with 165 grams roughly between the two packs. Uh, this 4,000 milliamp hour lipo will put out about 4,000 milliamp hours, give or take 100. This lithium ion pack will only put out about 3,800 milliamp hours instead of 4,200 because of the number of amps that it's going to be run at. But still, 3,800 milliamp hours for 450 grams versus 4,000 milliamp hours for 615. It's definitely worth the weight savings as long as you don't need the uh, lipo's ability to manage a lot of amps. Now that weight savings allows me to put more batteries on. So for instance, this these are both 2600 milliamp hour cells. So for a 5200 milliamp hour 6S pack, it's only 30 grams more than the 4000. And another reason I like to use lithium ion cells is because these all go through strict testing, at least all the good name brand cells do. And that testing involves uh, shaking, crushing, uh, dropping from a height, uh, being smashed and short circuited, as well as several other things. And the lithium ion cells all have to survive this without exploding and catching on fire to be able to pass the tests. Lipos, on the other hand, do not undergo the same testing. You cannot crush or short, or short circuit a lipo without uh, considerable risk of starting a fire. That greatly reduced risk of fire in the case of an accident is what makes lithium ion cells, in my opinion, a much safer choice for long range flights. And it's pretty much, it, it is the only thing I use for long range flights is lithium ion cells. So hopefully now you'll be able to make a much better informed decision when you're deciding on your own lithium ion cells to get. Like I said earlier in the video, I'll be posting a video soon about making my newest uh, 6S and 8S packs. And those are with, uh, for both of those, I used Moly Cell P28A cells. So I hope you found this helpful and informative. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to answering each and every one of them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.